here. What's up, everybody? It's your 28th favorite reviewer's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the masterpiece to Kara Tomy uh, Chi Tour. And the reason why I say 28th, I got a lot to talk about real quick before we go into this. This was sent to me by Blaine D. A shout out to him, Energon Entertainment, which I'm, I'm not super educated on. I'm going to be looking it up right after I get off of here. It was funny. The other day, I got like four or five people hit me up and asked me if I wanted to take a look at MP Chi Tour. And I was like, yeah, well, he hit me first, so I said yes to him first. And I was just like, wow, that, like, that's weird. It's strange. It's abnormal in, in my existence to have like four people hit me up and offer the same toy on the same day. That's not that's not common for me. That's not normal for me. And I, I, I thought it was strange, but, you know, I didn't think too much of it. I just kind of kept it moving. Well, it, it turns out that there was a, uh, a post that went down in the Cybertron Cafe. Shout out to the Cybertron Cafe on Facebook. It's a cool group, bunch of cool guys. And... Somebody had posted uh, Cheetor and I think was making a joke like somebody send this to, to Skullface so he can do a review of it that I definitely didn't ask them to do. And someone got on there and wasn't crazy about the work that I do, which is fine. That That's fine. We all have preferences and everyone is entitled to their preferences and their opinions. But, you know, some people were saying, I think he's the best. And, and he was like, he's not the best. He's more like the 28th best. The thing that was said that I really want to clear up is that gentleman was under the impression that when, when people from the community send me these figures that I keep them. Uh, just to clear it up for those that aren't clear, I feel like I say it in every review when, when, the, when these situations happen. But for those who still aren't clear, when people send me stuff from the community, I review it and I send it back to them. I, I don't keep, I don't have this large assortment of, of figures that people have sent me to review to keep. I, I Most of the time people are sending me stuff that I'm not interested in buying myself. So I review it for review purposes and I'm not really interested in owning it in the first place. Every now and then I'm sent something and I'm like, yeah, I gotta have this. Like, you know, and some of them I still haven't bought yet. A few that pop out are SH Figuarts, Bruce Lee and Figma Leonidas. You know, or two figures that were sent to me that I looked at that I was like, man, I think I do need this where before I didn't think I did. So that's how this got to me. I'm very appreciative of everyone that's shown their support in that matter. And um, love is love. It's all good. No worries. Uh, let's continue on. So this is going to be a little bit of a different review only in one regard. And that regard is I will be looking at the accessories in two parts. So we'll do the Cheetor, uh, the Cheetah mode accessories now, and then we'll do the robot mode accessories later. So he comes with three heads, one that came on him and then the other two. Uh, I wanted to show them all separately because there, there are a number of interesting things about them. So we have one kind of angry face and then one kind of surprised face and then one sort of just standard face. So they all have different facial expressions and then all of their mouths open and close to a different degree. So this is all of them as closed as they go and then we'll show them as open as they go. But before we do that, I want to talk about uh, the detailing. So one of the things that I think might end up becoming problematic are these whiskers. Now my buddy T2RX6, he pointed this out early on when seeing the prototype images. And he was saying how, you know, it's going to be hard for these bristles to stay you know, uh, sorted. And I think he's right because I, I, I've seen pictures of everyone's cheat tour. Everyone's very excited and that's awesome. Um, but it, it, the, the, the whiskers haven't been straight. Now I'm not going to do this to this guys because it doesn't belong to me, but I would be curious if you took, uh, some hot water or a blow dryer to this, if it wouldn't sort itself out naturally, and then you could pose it and be done with it. But I think there's a couple things. One, the packaging and two, the transformation that are always going to cause a problem for these whiskers. They are like a brush bristles, uh, feeling. I, I think they look cool. I think it's a nice touch. I just think it's going to be very difficult to kind of keep sorted. Now that that's done, let's talk about the paint. There's tons of it, but I do have to talk about, <laughs> people are going to get very defensive. So there is a theory out there that uh, the paint on the spots and stuff, and I've only read this from, from seeing other people's, because I don't, I'm not an expert on Beast Wars, but that they're trying to emulate the pixeled uh, element of the, the cartoon or the, the digital animated cartoon or whatever it was with these kind of... Uh, definitely more pixelated spots. Now I'm going to try, I'm not sure if it's going to be able to, to focus on it, but but they're definitely done with like a digital paint and as a result the, the, the spots are very pixelated but you only really notice it up close. You'll never notice it on a shelf 
you know, standing as far as one normally stands away from the shelf. Getting up close, you will notice it. I personally doubt that they were trying to emulate the, the cartoon. There seems to be a lot of companies, especially Japanese companies, are going to this digital paint format. And there's definitely a learning curve to it, and there's definitely some growing pains that are coming along with it. And I would imagine that it's more associated with that than it is trying to be accurate to the cartoon. But either way, the good news is it doesn't look bad as long as you're standing, you know, a, a reasonable distance away from it. It looks just fine. There is this great a gradient from white to yellow that's done really well, once again, as long as you're standing, like, even... From, it, from where I'm holding it to where my head is, you know what I mean? Like, I can't really notice it. But if you get up close, you're definitely going to see it. It's just like this digital, like the dots, like the dot matrix breaks up. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but it does look good from a distance. It does look good from, from a, a standard sort of position as you would view this thing. It's hard to explain, but <clears throat> take my word for it. The inside of the mouth is all painted yellow. I mean, I'm yellow, what am I talking about? All painted like this pink color, and then the teeth are all painted, and it's all done really sharp. The nose is painted, you know, the black stripes down the side of the face are painted, and then the eyes are painted, which we will talk about separately in a minute. So, all in all, I think they did a really good job with it. I'm just pointing out that paint issue because uh, it's a review, and you have to. I say that to say this, I don't think it will bother anyone in hand. And before we uh, kind of move on, here they all are also with their mouths open. Now the other thing that you'll notice are the eyes. We have one set looking forward, one set looking off to that, in that direction, one, soft, one side looking off to this direction. Really smart choice. And all of these heads peg in here. We'll show the articulation before we peg it back on. And then all of the eyes uh, you can remove just by sliding this piece here, put your finger in there, and that groove is slided out. And then you can swap the eyes so that the surprise face can look to the left, the angry face can look to the right, and the <laughs> What the f is that? No, I don't trust it. In all seriousness, though, this is one of the freakiest things I've ever seen in my life, I think. But, you know, you can just take out the different pieces, swap them around, and then you can have the eyes express different things. All that stuff is really smart. All that stuff is very, like, Takara gimmicky, where it's like, man, I would have never thought of that. It's a brilliant idea. So I dig all that kind of stuff. Now, let me show you how these heads connect in the articulation. So the head simply goes onto there. We'll show that in a second. But I wanted to show you this, this system that they came up with because it is pretty smart. So you got a hinge inside of this neck cavity that can cause the head to go up and down, which comes out to a separate hinge, which allows the head to go left and right. And then, of course, where it plugs into the peg, it's on a swivel. So all that stuff works out really nicely to get the cat to be able to move the head around a fair distance in most directions. So that's really well done. It's really well thought out. When I got this out of the box, it was like this. And I was like, Ugh, I don't like that one bit. But you can just pull it out a little bit. <clears throat> it causes this little bit of a gap, but I don't think it's hateful. And I think it kind of fits the character design. So, you know, and then you're sorted and you're good to go. Just got to be careful with the distance in which you keep it. As for the cheetah mode itself, I think it's okay. Uh, I think there is some 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 really well done stuff here, and I think there's some stuff that's kind of passable. But let's talk about it. So articulation wise, you have you have this whole shoulder piece that moves, but you really only need this shoulder here to move to get you the articulation range and kind of keep the fluidity of the sculpt. So that would be my suggestion. It also hinges out here so that you can you know kind of spread his, his his front legs like he's getting ready to pounce or something and that's all good we have a bicep swivel so that's fine and then we have <clears throat> pardon me an elbow that gets you the paw all the way to there and then straight now the foot has a hinge all the way down almost straight and even up to a decent range and the bottom of the paw is painted as well i dig little stuff like that and the claws are all painted, and it has this, um, this, this matrix, this dot matrix pa paint pattern throughout the entire toy. And it has the same gradient from white to orange. The only one that's different is this weapon, and it kind of, it just fades quicker, so it does look slightly out of place, but I don't think it'll bother you in hand. 
There are some things that I think will bother you in hand, but we'll get to them. So, and it also has a hinge here um, for a, a, a rocker like an ankle rocker for the front paws. You don't really have it for the back paws, but I don't think you need it for the back paws, but we'll get there. Now, this abdomen section. So, there is a theory that this is all done purposely so that the cat can kind of arch its back. I, I, I'm not sure I'm buying that. I, I, it's a nice thought, but I, I think it's just... I don't think it's enough to kind of give it that credit. I think this is something that should have been able to solidify a bit better than if you wanted to untab it to kind of get that extra art you could have. But as a result, I think it really just is a bit, I don't know, it's a bit unfinished to me in that regard just here. It's almost like you, you, you have to kind of have them in this this one position which is ultimately fine because I think that's the position that most people would use but it is a it is a bummer that it's not solid do you know what I mean like it, it, it really feels incomplete in that regard let's keep it moving so the tail <laughs> this is another aesthetic issue I have with this um, and it may be cartoon accurate I'm not sure I haven't I haven't watched Beast Wars in a very long time but it kind of looks it kind of looks like he's a cat getting ready to spray something like all the time because the tail always comes up like this. There's like this this space here. This is just a, a sculpt design thing. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know about this. I, I, I'm not crazy about the aesthetic of it. It it kind of works ish. It just feels like this tail shouldn't always be up. Like it seems like there should almost be like an extra hinge like right there where you could bring it down. Do you know what I mean? But as a result, it's always... Because you, you have these hinges here, but, I mean, that looks stupid. Do you know what I mean? So you're kind of forced to have it, at least this one, out to here, and then maybe you could curl the top one up. That doesn't look bad. Um, but that does, you know? So I, I don't know. I, I don't like the tail either. And then the hind legs, we have the swivel here, the outward hinge here, but you can't really use it because you don't have the rocker. So you, you can kind of keep, the, I think it's best to keep the back legs together, which isn't terrible because most animals have their back legs, you know, fairly tight together as well. We'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> but you have a knee here, and then you have an additional ankle here, and then you have, I think, a tilt here. Am I correct? Yes, and you have an ankle tilt there. Lastly, for my complaints, I feel like and I, once again, I haven't looked at the cartoon model in a long time, so maybe this is accurate. But this looks... So, like, this all looks up here, like, and if you keep it in the right spot, this all looks very smooth and fluid and kind of together. And then this section kind of looks like we did the best we can, in my opinion. But the, the functionality of the cheetah is ultimately fine. So I don't think it's a terrible alt mode or anything... <clears throat> but I think that there are just some aesthetic things that could have been done better. Uh, but all in all, I think it's it's fair. So we're going to start the transformation. Of course, I'm going to use care because this doesn't belong to me. But we're going to start with these two pieces first. So he has two accessories. Both are pretty cool. They're stowed down in here. It's funny. I could get it to pop out all the time. And now I need it. There it is. Uh, plugs in from there to there. I'll set those aside and we'll talk about them once we get to bot mode. And then we have these pieces, which you just lift up on these corners here around the flank of the cat. Fold up. And that should give you the clearance to sort of unpeg this whole piece. And then you can set that to the side. I'm going to do this, <laughs> this section <clears throat> by itself because if you don't do this, it will screw you up later. Rotate the legs to the opposite side of the animal. And then untab them from this section here you can see there's the hinge and I'm just a lot of this is a, a little on the tight side and then rotate this here and then tab it back in and that allows you to have the ankles in the right spot I uh, initially people thought it was misconstructed or something and it was actually I think Sergio G that initially pointed out to everybody that that, that wasn't the case and this can actually slide back now too I believe and that can flip down all right so let's take the foot and bring it down and then you can take this out this becomes the kneecap that comes all the way up and then 
you can fold the paw of the animal back into the back of the leg and then you can bring the heel spur down and then you can lock the foot into position. So we'll do the same on the other side. Bring the foot down, push the knee pad up, take the animal foot and just shove it in the back and then take the heel spur, bring it down and then you can lock the foot into position. The last thing you want to do is take these flaps here and cover down on the uh, calf. Really smart leg transformation. All right, so let's bring this piece down here. We can open this up a little bit, give us some wiggle room. And then we're gonna take, that's the robot head. Its ears come through the chest. We'll talk about that. That's a slightly problematic. We'll talk about it later. Um, bring the head out and around. Well, it came off. So it sits there and then you can hinge it up there. Now, for these back legs, you want to take this notch and have it click in there and then this peg clicks into the arm and then there is a way and we'll talk about it during uh, the breakdown of the figure but there is a way to have it where the leg kibble uh, which I think is even cartoon accurate it is kind of non-visible but we won't worry about it right now we're just going to get it out of the way all right on the other side we're going to split the arms and we're going to rotate them out on this joint here and then you can rotate the bicep back and then extend them and then we have to get the shoulders up so that they connect to this point here so I don't even know if that's quite right, but we'll do it for now and I'll see if I can't because it should go a little further. But yeah, I'll just try to work on it later, but there's two teeth here and you see I've got them mostly under on this side. I don't have them mostly under on that side, but that's ultimately what you're looking for. And then these rock back, these uh, forearm panels here on both sides. Uh, there are some, some tight joints on this, uh, which is, you know, it's better to have them tight than loose. That's my, that's my theory, so to speak. But uh, it does make, you know, it, obviously I'm not super comfortable with this transformation. The figure is not mine, so I don't want to mess with it too much. And uh, it does, it, it does, it's, it's not the most comfortable feeling uh, getting them to move. I would guess, I would guess over time that they'll loosen up, but there's just no way to be sure of that. There, I got those underneath for the most part. There. So that's how you want them. It's just a matter of sorting them out. The final step is this dual head assembly. I would suggest that you go ahead and collapse the cheetah head first, rotate it around, and then you want to put this head into this cavity and then this all accordions down. Now, I'm just gonna say this. I think over time with multiple transformations, you could at the very least damage the whiskers and possibly the paint. Now, if you're a guy that transforms this figure once or twice and is kind of done with it, uh, you know, just, you know, display on a shelf and be good. I don't think you have a problem. But if you're a guy that likes to flip it back and forth, what I would suggest is taking this head off and sitting it to the side. You don't need it. Just put it in the box because I do think you could cause damage at the very, like I said, at the very least, at least to the whiskers, maybe to the paint. So what you want to do is you want to accordion this section in first. So you tuck the head in, and what you're looking for is this white piece here to sit flush up against this back piece here. And maneuver. That's what you want. Does that make sense? And then this whole piece accordions down and this piece plugs into the neck. So let's do that. All right, so then we had this accessory that we set aside, correct? So it has this handle that you can pull down. And then if you can get your thumb right in between these two spots, you can lift this up, flip the barrel out, and then close this back down. And you have your weapon. 
it's got that organic looking stuff and then this this nice copper gold finish looks really good uh the only part that's a little unsightly is the part that plugs into the beast but i think that it also kind of looks like a sight you know if you want you know i don't think it's too far of a stretch so i think it ultimately works really well and then it uses utilizes the typical masterpiece style plug in and you just wedge it in there plug it in close the hand around it and he does hold it just fine um, and he's not even plugged in properly but I've done it there there it is and I think this is the uh, cartoon gun I believe I could be wrong but uh, yeah looks good all right and then we have this piece left over as well so you want to take these pieces and tuck them inside this cavity there once again a little tight fold them down and then this pegs into there Pull the gun barrel up, and then I want to thank you. Well, let me stay oriented. And then we twist this around, and it's tight like a tiger. And then we, or a cheetah. And then we put that down, and then this piece has to come down like that. And then this, and then this pegs into both the handle and the barrel. And I think this was his toy gun, I believe I've heard folks say. And with this one, you just want to make sure you have the clearance here on, on this uh, forearm pad. And you just sort of have to manipulate it in there and then use the tension of the fingers to hold it. And it works okay. Not great. But, you know, for a picture, for, a, you know, a display, you know, pose and not mess with you know it'll ultimately be all right but it's not it's not the best it's kind of you know what it is it's fine and lastly we have the two alternate faces we have this one which is like a i don't know i don't i, I have to be honest with you i don't know what these are emoting maybe this is a smiley face and this is like a smirk maybe I'm not sure. We'll talk about the detailings when, the, when we get to the proper head that's on there now, but they're all done the same way, uh, which I feel good and bad about in some regard, but um, I'm not sure that these are, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like this is a very niche thing, right? To have alternate heads, like they should really have, you know, kind of very unique emotions to go along with them. There's a bit of a flash there. And I'm not sure that these are that unique, you know, like they're all kind of similar, but you know, you have them if you want them. This piece here is on a ball joint, and then the hinge is here. So it's it's like a hinge swivel, but the swivel is mostly controlled by the ball joint, which I think is, is okay. I'm okay with it. Usually I prefer just the hinge swivel, but I'm all right with the little bit of give that that ball joint will offer. And it's covered down, so you don't have to worry about the small peg to make it look like a little minuscule neck. So ultimately, I'm okay with it. Articulation-wise, you don't get much down. You can get an extreme bit up if you come up off that peg a little bit. So that's nice. And then you get the swivel, of course. The um, finish here is is really, you know, it's breathtaking. It's brilliant. Like the copper gold look, the blue, it, it's like a metallic paint for both. It has the uh, good guys symbol, the Mac Maximals. And my only complaint is that it's done with light piping. So here's the problem with that, among other things, is that like if you have this guy on a shelf, most of the time the lights are always facing forward in a room so the eyes are always going to look dead. And I don't think they did light piping with Optimus, so I'm not sure why they did it here with Optimus Primal. So I, I kind of feel like that was a poor choice. I'm sure. Let me see if it'll. Yeah, I just put it you know, facing the opposite way. And it works really well when you have light behind it. I just don't know how often you're gonna have light behind this guy. So I ultimately think it was a poor choice. Everything else though looks good. The sculpt, the paint, and the articulation all work well there. So we have these uh, things behind them, like the shoulder pads. They painted the inside of them with the cheetah pattern. So I think that's awesome. And then they have these two little designs here that are all done in that same copperish gold finish. Looks good. I also wanted to talk about briefly uh, I've seen a lot of pictures with the guy with this guy with the arms kind of all willy nilly all over the back and you can clean it up fairly well where you don't even notice it from the front. 
you know, and, and like you can see a little bit of legs there, you know, if he's standing straight, but you could probably clean it up even better. I didn't use much effort. I just kind of straightened them out, you know, just by having the arms more straight and the pegs that are on here all the way in the shoulder pads. You can really clean them up fairly well from the front. Moving on. The shoulders are where I have most of the issues um, in bot mode. So you get tons of articulation, okay? They operate on this piece here, the system here, which swivels down at the bottom and hinges down at the bottom. Now, the arms are actually have to, supposed to have this piece, uh, I should, this piece here against the side to fill in that gap. And it does look good like that. Um, but if you pull it out a little bit and you pull it around, you get a good bit of a butterfly joint to get the arm pretty much all the way, almost all the way across the chest. When you're manipulating this, as long as you're manipulating this front circle and back circle around the shoulder, it works fine. Every now and then, you can get the middle piece, it's more obvious on this shoulder, to come apart from this top piece, and that is uh, frustrating. It's, it's just a weird system there. Other than that, you also, so you get the swivel here at the bottom, you get the hinge up, and then you get the shoulder up. So there's no articulation flaw there. And then you get this bicep swivel, you get the butterfly joint. So like the articulation range is great. It's just that this is, um, it's, it's, it's a little, it's a little wonky. Nothing that you can't kind of fix after you get done posing them. It's just not the most fluid kind of uh, articulation system. So moving on, it also has this, this finish of this like a uh, purplish blue. I guess it's much more of a blue than a purple, but it's not like a, a royal blue. Bicep, uh, bicep swivel, double jointed elbow that gets you the entire range. So nothing to scoff at there. A wrist swivel because the hand just pegs in. And it's a little tight on this side. Let me see, check this side. This side's a little bit better. And then the fingers are on a base pin knuckle. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do much with them pose-wise because they're kind of in this holding the gun pose at all times. So really, you can kind of have like a relaxed hand. You can hold the gun or you can make a fist. And that's really what you're limited to because anything else kind of looks ridiculous, which is ultimately, I think, okay. It's just not optimal, so to speak. On the inside here, like that's something that we should talk about. So on the inside of this transformation piece here, like this is the, the show piece. This is just inside the show piece. And it's the same here. They painted both. And that is a level of passion and a level of commitment that I, I admire. So I, I definitely think they did a great job there. If we get the arms out of the way, you can see that he does have a waist swivel. But it, once again, it is um, a bit obnoxiously tight. We have basically, I, I guess they're disc hinged hips which is different but they act like universals and you can get you know a crazy you can get past the van I mean, van dam doesn't have anything on that and then as far as the full monty you get to about there but if you get the waist flap up you can get the full monty and i don't think that's a terrible kind of uh, sacrifice to make and if you spread the leg just a little bit i mean you can get most of it down no thigh swivel, but you do get a swivel just above the knee. So ultimately, I think that's fine. We have the gold finish here. We have the blue finish inside here. We have the faux cheetah chest, which I think looks great. And it gives them a way out to swap the eye color. So I think that all works. Tons of paint everywhere. For the knees even, which is a basically a joint, it is sculpted with detail and then painted on top. So nothing to scoff at there. For the knee articulation, it's a single disc hinge but it basically gets you 90 degrees, so that works well. We have this uh, metallic blue finish once again down here at the bottom with the copper finish on the spikes and then the cheetah print on the legs all looking good. The heel spur even has the copper finish as well. Articulation wise for the feet, we have an nothing, uh, no ankle tilt whatsoever, which is a bit of a bummer, but you do get a toe hinge, so that pr that, that that's helpful. Not perfect, but it's helpful. And then we have the gold paint down there, and you do get an ankle rocker. It's not really a proper ankle rocker. It's a toe rocker. But I think that, that once again, ultimately, it will fulfill its need, and it won't have any breakup in the sculpt, and it'll all carry through well. So I won't ping them for that either. I think that that's ultimately okay. Uh, it doesn't clean up great, but I think this might be show accurate. So 
I mean, I guess it looks the way it's supposed to look. And I think that's all we really have to say about this guy. And size comparison wise, there he is with an MP car. So he's, a, he's about on par with that size. And I think that's fine. I've seen pictures of him with Primal and it looks appropriate. I don't have Primal, so no way to, no way to say. Because he was sent to me by a friend and I was able to send him back. Final thoughts wise, there's a couple things I want to get out of the way before we really dig in here. One of those is I want to give a shout out to Official and 3P MP Transformers Worldwide. That's a Facebook group. Uh, they've been showing me some love in there and I want to make sure I show them love. I try to show love to all the groups that, that kind of throw some my way. So shout out to them. And of course, another shout out to Blaine for sending this guy to me. Now let's dig in a little bit. Let's talk about the negatives because there are some here to boot. So let's talk about the robot first of all. One of the issues with the robot is that he doesn't hold this hand very well. Not, a, I mean, this hand very well. What am I talking about? He doesn't hold this gun very well. Not the biggest deal in the world, but something worth mentioning. The ankles don't have any tilt. It's all rocker. Once again, usually not the biggest deal in the world, but it's worth mentioning. You can see that there's no issue whatsoever getting him in a dynamic pose. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's pretty awesome. I will definitely give it to him there. Another complaint that I have, though, is there are some inconsistencies in the joints. Some work smoothly like you expect for a Takara masterpiece to work. Some are a bit tighter than we're used to seeing. That may be because of the amount of paint. I'm willing to, to succeed that. It also may be because some of the things they've been doing here, um, I, I, I actually appreciate and I'm definitely willing to accept the tightness of the joints if that's why they are that tight. But like some of the joints here are painted which we rarely ever see. So if I got to have some tighter joints in order to get them painted, I'll eat that charge. I'm willing to take it. Another problem is these shoulders. The shoulders just, it's its not a deal breaker, but they are a bit obnoxious. They are a bit on the wonky side. Ultimately, they're fine. It's just not as kind of polished as you expect Masterpiece to be. The only other issue that I, I want to point out in robot mode is that there's a there's a significant amount of paint. I wouldn't say, you know significant isn't fair, but I have noticed some paint chipping along the way, and I think that's because of how tight some of this stuff is in 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 relationship to other pieces. So they're kind of like I mentioned before with tucking this cheetah head up in there. I'm not sure I would do that. There's an awful lot of paint on this guy and I would really try to minimize your paint rub because you may end up with uh, some paint chipping or some paint wear. Once again, it's not a deal breaker for me because I think that for the for most collectors, it's something that you can easily avoid. But I don't think this is like a muck about on the floor type of piece. But if you are that guy and you know who you are, where you muck about on the floor, this may not be the guy to do it with because I do feel like you will notice some paint wear along the way. There's some here on this um, crotch piece too. And I would imagine that that's how the way you have to flip it down and going back to to uh, cheetah mode. Speaking of cheetah mode, I think the cheetah mode is where most of it kind of falls apart. I think that the cheetah mode lacks the consistency. You know, like there's all sorts of, of breaks and lines and the front part and the back part don't really solidify. And some people say that's due to wanting the, the cat's back to arch. Uh, maybe. I'm not sure if I buy that. Uh, I also wanted to point out real quick that he does have a peg uh, down there in the bottom and there, it is in cat mode as well. So you can hook him up into a stand if that's your thing. But I think that the cheetah mode is definitely the weakest of the of the links. You know, it is interesting. I was having a conversation with Joe KW about this kind of stuff. And it's just an interesting topic to sort of think about. And that is that you know, the cheetah probably looks cartoony because of where they were with digital animation at the time. So the cheetah doesn't really look like a cheetah in the same way that Bumblebee from G1 doesn't really look like a Volkswagen bug. However, with the Masterpiece line, they got the license to try to make it look as accurate to what it was supposed to be as possible. And what that ultimately means is sacrificing the G1 cartoon aesthetic to kind of capture the spirit and capture the real world element of that car. So now you had this G1 car that didn't look much like the real world car, but to translate it into, into a toy, they went with a very real world looking car. Now. I wonder why that thought process doesn't cross over here. And I wonder, I'm not a, I'm not a huge, I'm not a Beast Wars fan at all, let's be honest. But I wonder what Beast Wars fans would think if they took that same sort of mentality and did it here. I wonder if this transformed into a cheetah that looked more like a real cheetah 
and less like a cartoon cheetah, how Beast Wars fans would feel about that. Now, I get that the animal mode is going to have more of a character to it than, say, a Lamborghini would. I totally get that. So I'm not passing judgment on it. I'm just raising it as an interesting discussion topic. I think we've all seen that custom. I don't know who did it, but whoever did it did a great job. It was like a, a Optimus Primal custom, and they had f like real world fur on the, or I don't know if it was real world fur, but they made it look like real world fur on the gorilla mode. And it kind of looked more like a real gorilla and then transformed into the robot that looked kind of more tune accurate. And I wonder if they took that approach, how the Beast Wars fans would react to that. And then I also wonder well, if, if they can make those successions here, if they can't try to start carrying them over into the, the G1 Masterpiece molds. Meaning that I wonder if they didn't you know, say, you know what, we don't need the licenses. Let's just take a, a few creative liberties and not get the license to some of these vehicles so that we can make the actual figures. So I'm not knocking it for that. I'm not knocking it for taking the tune look in cheetah mode. I am just raising the, the question of what does that mean and and how does that translate into what we've seen from Dakar in the past and what the difference is and how you guys feel about how I don't even know how I feel about it. I'm just raising it as a discussion point. But I don't think the cheetah mode ultimately works. I don't think it works because it doesn't lock in. And I think the tail looks weird. And I think that um, I think the rest of it, it's fair. Right. But I don't think that it knocks it out of the park. I think that for the most part, the robot mode does knock it out of the park. Couple little, you know, like solidity in these shoulders. I could use, uh, you know, something to, to kind of make the paint not wear. And I could use a little bit of, of, of joint tolerance things. But for the most part, those are nitpicks. I know it sounds like a lot of complaints, but they're all relatively minor. But on to the positives. I think they knocked the sculpt out of the park. I think it looks just like the character. I'm not a fan of the character. I don't like the way the character looks, but it looks like the character. So people that do like the character and do like the way the character looks are probably very happy. And nothing makes me happier than other people being happy. The materials feel up to par with what you've expected from Takara. There's no ratchets or anything like that, but as we've already discussed, the joints are maybe a little too tight in most places where you don't feel like there's any looseness to, to concern yourself about. In fact, the problem is usually the opposite, and if you're going to have the joints either too tight or too loose, I think we'd all agree that it's better to have them a bit too tight. The articulation is really second to none. I mean, with the exception of those ankle tilts, it knocks pretty much everything else right out of the park. I wish they would have done something a bit different with the fingers so you could have had a little bit more options in there. But for the most part, I think the articulation is dead on the money. I think the presence is strong. I think that it stands there. It looks like it's supposed to look it. it you know, it's not my thing, but I think that if it was your thing, you would be 100 percent content with it. I think that the engineering is what we've kind of come to expect from Takara. It's it's very smart. It's very intuitive. The only part that gets a little weird is with those shoulders, but I think that ultimately it's fairly excusable. The only thing that worries me in regard to that transformation is possible paint wear. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out is we, sh we shouldn't have done light piping. We should have painted those eyes. But yeah, ultimately, I think this is the definitive Cheetor. I, I strongly recommend it, and I don't think that you'll ever see a better... Uh, Cheetor come along, at least not anywhere in the in the near future. So lastly, I just want to close with saying uh, thanks to all those people that support what I do and that I feel I have my back out there in the interwebs. I, I do appreciate the love. I, I definitely do. And don't think it goes unnoticed. There's a lot of people that bring stuff like that to my attention. Oh, you know, an articulation point I, I forgot about. There is a wrist hinge. I can see it. Well, at least it looks like one. I'm sitting here talking and I can see it. Let's see. Yeah, so you can get it inward, outward. You won't be able to get up and down, but you can get in and out. A little tight also, but, you know, all good. But, yeah, stuff like that is always brought to my attention, and it's always nice to see people kind of, you know, sticking up for me when I, I, I'm, I'm usually not partaking in any of the conversation. It's, you know, it's, it's, nice to, it's nice to get the love, right? But what I do want to say is, you know, never, never let anybody take you out of your character. Everything I try to do, uh, at least in 2017, is turn negatives into positives. So, like, I see something like that, and it's given me an idea for a project in the future that I think a lot of you will enjoy. I'm hoping to have something to show you guys by April. Um, I think you guys will be pretty excited about it. It's something that a lot of you have asked me about in the past, and I think I'm getting ready to make it happen. And it's mainly as a result of this negative. So we take something negative, we make it a positive, we get stronger, we grow, and we build. Am I right? Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.